What's up, guys? This is Revenge of the Jocks, and I'm your host, Marty. And right now is a really cool episode because I have really cool people on here, and it's our first time to have a threesome on this show. John has been able to create his own shoe line that's been successful. People checking for their shoes. He makes really cool shoes and shit that I could never get my hands on personally because they sell out as soon as they hit the internet. So you just launched a new shoe. Uh, they sold out 16 minutes. Damn, that's yeah, like so your that, sex time. Yes, yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> on a good that. night. <laughs> what made you want to start making your own shoes? Yeah, so play basketball, I was always into that, but I was more into like Rodman and collected shoes, would always like write on them and draw on them. People would always ask like, you know, I'll get a fresh pair of shoes and draw on them or write on them. And I think that's what started it. That's the big problem with society now, though, is that it takes somebody else to tell you what you should like. If you see something, you like it, like you like it. You shouldn't have to wait for Kanye or, or Virgil or, or whoever to say this is cool. Like, when you start to create what you think the audience wants is when you, I think you go wrong, right? In creativity, people pay you for your point of view. Anytime I make something, it's from my perspective. You know, this is my perspective or my take on whatever it may be because everything that's created in this world has been something that's been reshaped. Sometimes it's okay for something to to be like good enough and to go on to the next thing yes yeah. if not you're just going to spend all your time working on something and nothing is ever going to be perfect you may work on something all day today come back to it tomorrow and want to change everything and then you're just kind of like running on this treadmill and not getting anywhere like i feel like that a lot of times a lot of stuff that athletes do i paved the way creatively and they're doing it and they get a lot of credit like like in 2010 my first foundation that i ever started was called more than an athlete you know what i'm saying then i look at the whole branding of everything they're doing to interrupt it but i'm like oh yeah I, my first foundation was actually called more than an athlete i've been my ted talk before they even came out with that was called more than an athlete you know what i'm saying so then it's like bam the more more than athlete thing comes out and it's like this huge deal and i'm just like i've been saying that shit for the yeah. longest and i've been i've been pushing it out the longest but i feel like some people voices would be heard more so than others being first right now isn't actually the best thing for you not at all not at all no that's how i felt about my interactive children's stories the ones i make there's no other children's story apps there or story apps like interactive story apps there or anything close to what mine are like you know for one as an athlete being creative people don't look at it the same already because they don't feel like i have that name behind me like you know what I'm, saying? I'm not like if disney dropped what i dropped yeah. they'll be like oh this is the best app in the world or if you know sesame street whoever it may be nickelodeon whoever it may be they drop it then it's just like oh this is great you know what i'm saying but since it's the martellus business imagination agency yeah. studios is like oh you know it's like and then everyone who buys is like oh this is awesome but it's like when does you hit that tipping point when you make it some shit that you know is dope you don't really go out for that marketing thing or like, you know, like, hey, try and send it to every celebrity, take yeah. a picture in this. You're just like, oh, the shit's dope. I know that my shit's cool. So, like, I don't want to have to tell you, like, hey, come buy this. You know right. what I'm saying? But when's the balance? Like, when do we, what, how do we balance that, like, the marketing, but still keeping the marketing where it's not all in your face, buy this, shoving it down your throat? What did you find the best ways to sell product through Instagram? Because a lot of people are trying to master that. And for everybody, it's not going to be the same. What works for you may not work for someone else. Well, I, yeah, that's the that's the thing is what works for us might, like, might not work for the next brand or whatever. And every release, we're experimenting to see what does work. We'll post new product and we'll post like when it's releasing and stuff like that. We might post like one or two times about it, but we're not going to pound you with that same product every day. You got to start a diet together, right. right? You started premium with $300, 220 <laughs> Yeah, he's really pounding that part in tonight. Because that's, uh, that's amazing. Because no, yeah. everyone would be like, I want to start a business, but I don't have this. I don't have this. I need someone to invest this amount in me. For me, that's fascinating, right? When we, when we were really, like, launching the clothing for premium, we were compared to John Elliott, like, a lot. Yeah. Um, because we were doing basics. They were doing basics. They're still doing basic, basics. I saw an interview with John Elliott, and he was saying, like, we only started the company with, like, 50000 or 30000 is all we had to start with. And I'm looking, like, like 30000 or 50000 whatever it was. I'm like, we started with, like, $300. My first film, first movie I ever did, I fucking hate this shit. I mean, I love it, but I hate it because it was, like, paying to go to school. 
Like, I never made an animated film before in my life, and I read all these books, and I watched all these animated films, and I was like, all right, let's do it. I got a story to tell. Let's do it. And it was just like, there's so many mistakes I made that I wouldn't do now. But at the same time, I love it because I wouldn't know as much as I know now yeah. if it wasn't for those mistakes that I made. So that's why I tell every player they're an entrepreneur. And I was, they always look at me crazy. I'm like, you, if your body is your business. Like, you're you're building, like, you're investing in yourself when you eat a better meal than a bad meal. You know what I'm saying? Like, you eat something healthy. That's an investment in yourself. And the more investments, like, there's some guys who don't get massages or, like, get work done. I'm just like, bro, like, that's like saying I never take my car to the shop. I think we were talking about going to the gym, and he was like, I'm not going. Like, I only work out to fit designer clothes. I was like, we're putting that on a T-shirt one day, and that's – that. One line stuck with me for three years before we launched Diet. I feel like when I started doing what I'm doing, everyone counted me out. And I see so many guys when they retire struggle because they took that advice of not trying to like be their full selves or experiment in life and, and go do all these different things and try these different businesses and follow your dreams. Like football is a dream, but it's only one dream, right? How many dreams do we get? Like, you know what I'm saying? Get as many as you want. How many can you accomplish? Yeah. As many as you're willing to work for. So it's like, why should I listen to everyone tell me not to try to achieve other things I always want in life because of some idea of like oh you know you play football but it's like football the average career is three and a half years if it wasn't for japan i wouldn't have retired and i say that because when i went to japan it was so many people were in love with every single part of what they did right no matter how simple the work was or how big the job was they loved it to the max and they were happy you talked to them about it the, for the moment that you could understand it was they were just you could just see how elated they were to the work and what their work was and there was not too many people that just did stuff to do stuff right i think here in america one thing i realized we have a lot of people just do stuff to do stuff is you kind of have to you kind of have to find that right pocket of the wave to where you're not too early you're just right at the right peak of the wave but to catch it. Sometimes you can't afford to wait. Like you gotta, no, you've been you working can't. on this, so you drop it. But it's like I gotta drop it. But but then you realize if I dropped it two months later, it might have been a little bit better because something may, else may have happened, right? I don't, I don't think anybody could time something perfectly. It either happens like by chance or or it doesn't. You can't change the current. But you could create a splash. Right. I'm playing for the Dallas Cowboys, right? And when you play for the Dallas Cowboys, a lot of awesome shit happen. But when you're a rookie, they do these rookie dinners, right? And this year is Des Bryant's turn to do the rookie dinner. So we go to this place that's great food. One of the best steaks I ever have, have in my life. It's called Papa's Steakhouse. And Mary and Barbara orders this drink. It's Louis the Thirteen Black Pearl. And it's $2,500 a shot. So they bring it out. And it's in his box, and they bring it to the, the table, and the guy puts his white glove on like Michael Jackson, opens up the box, and it's a light that's illuminating it, and it's like this bright-ass light. So I was like, I don't want one, Marion. No, you get one. You drink it. You with us tonight. You drink it. I took a sip, and I could feel my soul burning as it went down my esophagus, down to my tummy. The bill comes out to be $80,000. Wow. Who paid it? I think Jerry Jones did.